week. Yeah, you know what I mean? I know about that. Oh, yeah, he's trying to leave Brooklyn already. I, I think I heard, like, I saw something like saying he pulled an opt-out or something, but I don't know. Yeah, but he don't got no, he he, he signed a four-year deal, and he didn't he didn't put no option in there. So, yeah. Trade? Yeah. Wow, where you trying to go? He said the Suns or the Heat. <laughs> I'd rather have a second to win somewhere. Like, you know, let me go somewhere we build a team. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody with a nice little piece, somewhere with a nice little piece, but they underperform. You know what I'm saying? Like some some type of, at least some foresight if you're going to do something. Mad, like, yeah, go even, to Atlanta and help out Trey Young or something. <laughs> yeah. Like even LeBron made sure that he would go, except for when he went with D-Wade. D- you know what I'm saying? That he would go to a, you know what I'm saying, to a place where it's like, you know what I'm saying, I can just invite players here and make it look like I did something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now that boy trying to go to something already ready made. Yeah, ready that made. That thing crazy. Yeah, bro, like it, Cause your two rings don't solidify you at all. It's like, yeah, bro, that was you just kind of jumped on the. Yeah, he worse than LeBron, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's Take pretty bad. Back, and I didn't think you could get no worse, but he's definitely. I worse. still blame LeBron more because he started. You know yeah, what I'm saying? He like he, he, he forced worse. somebody to, to to get better than you at being whack, but you know. Anyway, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come to the uh, come to the uh, the. Uh, Come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father, through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High, however... Anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing they that we say to them is uh, repent that they might live. All right, Mel. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, open up to... That make this a good one. It's about to be the only one where the kids ain't tripping in the background. For real. This is uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 24. You know what I'm saying? Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. We only cover one chapter, so I'm going to try to, you know what I'm saying? Let's try to get through it today. When a man has taken a wife and married her, uh-huh. and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes. Okay, so hold on. When, when a man... When a man take a wife and he end up marrying his wife and it come to pass, he don't find no favor in her eyes. In his eyes, right? What happened? Because he has found some uncleanness in her. For what reason? Uncleanness. All right, so he said because he's found her to be unclean, right? Keep going, watch this. And let him write her a bill of divorcement. Right, Yahushua gave us a little bit.
right? All right, we back. Let's try it. What does it say now? And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and gives it in her hand and sends her out of his house, mm -hmm. or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled. Okay. For that is an abomination before the Lord. <laughs> you shall not cause the land to sin, which the Lord your God gives thee for an inheritance. <clears throat> when a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he has taken. All right, <laughs> so we, if we break out for battle right now, who we can't invite? That boy right there. Yeah, sit your butt down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sit your darn butt down. What's wrong with you? Damn, he can't go down. No That's way. law. Battle break out right now. Now you're like, all right, don't worry, we got it. Well, you better sit your darn butt down. You better have a darn seat. Take your butt home. Fight break out. You better go take your butt home. That's law. That's our law. Why would the most high God make that type of law? Well, I'll give you a hint. We read the answer, I think, last week. <clears throat> Maybe the week before. You gotta have kids. Why would the most high God make that law? Oh, we're gonna have to go back and get it. He's like, well, who is whoever's fearful? Mm -hmm. whoever's, you know, take Where's that at? Count the cost. Uh, read it, read it. Is it is it 23 or is it 20? 22. I want to say it's 23, right? I thought it was last week. No, Only thing running week. together. It wasn't last week? Try 22 then. We just read it. Ain't 22 either? Mm -hmm. We're going to find it. I'll give you some time to find it. Try to run my mouth a little bit until you find it. It's important that we understand it and we see and we look into the book. It's stuff it's that we look at. It's one thing we should all be asking, like, why, right? And sometimes <laughs> we can't answer them questions. It's some, it's some stuff that the Most High God got commanded that, at least me, I ain't got no why. I can't look through this. Because I only when I say why, the only way I'm going to answer that question of why is with the Scripture, right? I'm not about to, like, you know what I'm saying, with the Scripture and the epistle, epistle letter. I'm not about to say why and then come up with, you know what I'm saying, some theories. I don't know if y'all remember, we were talking to people about dietary food and all that, and they, you know what I'm saying? We were looking like, oh, no, you don't eat pigs because, see, the pig is, you know what I'm saying, has a demon spirit and this, that, and the other, da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you know what I mean? There ain't nothing about, I can't, look, I can't find that in the scripture. No, so you know, when y'all sure commanded the unclean spirits, they went into the demon. I was like, yeah, but is that because the pig? had demon spirits or did he put spirits in the pig? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know, like me, I can't look at that and I can't take that and be like, okay, all pigs have a demon spirit. That don't, that don't, that's not, that don't correlate with what I see. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not, I'm just saying that I don't have the information in the scripture to answer the why. <clears throat> so for me, you know what I say? Ain't none of my darn business. Yo, the pig's unclean. That's it. That, that's what it is. Ain't none of my, it's none of my bit, but it's good for us to ask the why because sometimes the why can be found in scripture, right? So when we look at this and we say, well, why in the world can't Daniel fight with us? It's go time, it's time to fight. We need as many people as we get. Why can't he fight with us? You found it? Let's read it. This why. Where's it at? Uh, Deuteronomy 20, verse four. Oh, way back in 20. Three. Crazy. Let's do start at three. This is uh, Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 20, verse 3. Watch the book say. You shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Uh -huh, it's time to battle. <clears throat> Enemy in front of us. Now, what the kids say? <clears throat> the ops. You know what I'm talking about? The ops in front of us. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? They out there. Let's get them. What's going on? Look at Daniel. Daniel in the front, too. You know what I'm saying? Daniel always think he are. Look at him in the front. He going to be the first one to him. Let's see what happens. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Damn, you ain't smacking his chest. I ain't scared. You know what I'm saying? He's smacking his chest. I ain't scared, boy. What y'all want? Ops over there. You know what I'm saying? Let's get him. Watch this. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to mm -hmm. save you. Damn, yeah. you over there preaching to them, boy. Most high God go before me. What do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Watch this. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, Watch the officers say. You know what I'm saying? The officers is like the leaders. You know what I'm saying? Like the managers. You know what I'm saying? They jump out there and the officers say what to the people? What man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let He's it. like, oh, 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 you just built a new house? 
You out there, you built a new house, you ain't dedicated it yet? What are you gonna say? Let him go and return to his house lest he die in battle and another man dedicated. You take your butt home, boy. You know what I'm saying? You, listen, you ain't built a new, go take your butt home, you ain't dedicated that. Right? What else he said? And what man is he that has planted a vineyard and has not yet eaten of it? Oh, you just planted a vineyard? <clears throat> you got some good wine coming out there. Oh, you ain't eat? Uh, take your butt home, boy. Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. Mm -hmm. And what man is there that has betrothed the wife and has not taken her? What man has done what? Betrothed the wife and has not taken her. Mm -hmm. Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in battle and another man take her. All right. And the officer should Listen, speak first. We gonna, we gonna make, did that answer the question why all the way for us? No. It kinda answered the question why, but not quite all the way. He said he has not taken her, right? All right, let's go back. This is Deuteronomy chapter 24. Where we leave off? Uh, five, verse five. This is Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse five. Watch this. Deuteronomy, here. Yeah. Look, man, I love the most high God. Sometimes you just gotta put it together. We ain't even, sometimes, some, you know what we usually do. We go through, this the first time we go through the book and we just going through it straight, right? Usually what we'll do, we'll still go through it in order, but we'll be reaching all the way over here, grab a little bit over here. We'll bring the whole book and put it together, right? That's how we usually do it, you know what I'm saying? We're taking a little bit of a slow and steady approach this time because we want to make sure that the foundation, the basics are understood. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times when we go in and we grab it from the New Testament, grab it from the prophecies and grab it for all this stuff and putting it all together and trying to paint a picture, that's more strong, it's more strong meat. You know what I'm saying? It's a little tougher to digest if you don't really understand the book. So now we want to go through it nice and slow and get the basics, get the understanding of what it's literally saying. That way, when we go to the New Testament, we'll go back and we have a strong foundation to build on. A lot of people don't understand the New Testament because they, they don't understand the scripture. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand the prophecies. They don't understand the prophecies because they don't understand the history. They don't understand the history because they don't understand the law, right? They don't understand the law because they don't understand the beginning, right? The whole thing is like you have, to, you have to kind of stack it on top. That's why it's written in the way it is. You stack it on top of the other. That's why all the prophets refer back because everything got to stack on top of the other. That's why the New Testament refer back because they all got to stack on top of the other. So that's what we want to do. But... Without even going, you know what I'm saying, to other books, we can stay right here and we can just see within the chapter stuff connect well. Right? Watch this. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business. Mm -hmm. But he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he has taken. Mm -hmm. No man shall take the nether or the upper milestone to a pledge, mm -hmm. for he takes a man's life to pledge. Mm-hmm. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel and making merchandise of him or selling him, then that thief shall die, and you shall put evil away from among you. All right? So that means as a Hebrew, <clears throat> it's, it's, against, it's against our law to go out and take another Hebrew and then try to sell him as a, as a servant or a slave. That's against our law. You wouldn't be able to do that as a Hebrew. Right? Not as an Israelite. That's crazy. All right? Keep going. Take heed the plague of leprosy that you observe diligently and do according to all that the priests and the Levites teach you. Mm -hmm. As I commanded them, so you shall observe to do. Mm -hmm. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam, by the way, after ye were come forth out of Egypt. When you do lend thy brother anything, you shall not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Right? He said, listen, <clears throat> if I lend you something, this is our law. Let's just, look, let's just look at the stuff that it put in there, the most I got put in there. If I lend you something, and I want my stuff back. The books say, you got to give it to me. I can't just go in there and just go up me out. Now, you owe me this, so it's mine. That's not our law. I can't. I know you owe it to me. You're in debt to me. And I see you owe me $15. And right your door open. And right there on the couch, on the night thing, right next to the, you know what I'm saying? $15 sitting right there. That's my $15. And you told me that you'll give it to me Friday. And what is today? It's darn Friday. It's right there in front of me. It's on your thing. Your door already open. It's right there. You not around. That's my $15 because you owe me $15. Guess what? I got to wait until you bring it to me. Because I can't go in your house and take your stuff. That's against our law. It don't matter. I'm in debt. Right? I mean, or that person is in debt to me. Right? That person will remain in debt to me until they pay me. Period. Right? Now the, the law going to get him on the other side if he don't pay me back. Right? You owe a man money, you got to give him money. Don't let the sun go down on it. Right? 
So that's important. The law gonna catch catch each side, but you gotta be disciplined enough to trust the law. You gotta trust that the most high God put a law in there is righteous that's gonna judge. Right? Keep going, watch this. You shall stand abroad, and the man to whom you did lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. What does that mean? Stand abroad. Stand outside. Stand, stand your butt stand, outside. Stand you better wait. <clears throat> out there being aggressive with that boy. No, get my money. You know what I'm saying? You better sit your butt outside. That's what I tell him too. You know what I'm saying? If it was me, I'm gonna get it. I stand right inside my door. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't you, you know what I'm saying? Who you yelling at? What you gonna do? You went in my house. That's against the law. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do sometimes. You better give me money, though. Keep going. Watch this. You shall stand abroad, and the man to whom you did lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. Mm -hmm. If the man be poor, you shall not sleep with his pledge. Mm -hmm. In any case, you shall deliver him the pledge again when the sun goes down, that he may sleep in his own raiment mm -hmm. and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee because before the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. You shall not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of your brothers or of the strangers that are in the land within your gates. That's beautiful, man. You look at it, look. Some stuff is only to our Israelite brothers. Some stuff is like, man, look, if it's your brother, you can't, you can't steal him and sell him as, a, you know what I'm saying, as merchandise. You can't steal him and try to sell him as a servant. You can't do that. That's an Israelite that you're talking about. You can't do that, right? But then they said, if a man is poor, I don't care what he is. I don't care where the man from. Don't you oppress nobody. And you understand that, like, this is the book that they say these people got, got, got what they do from? Right. They ain't got nothing. Listen, man, I don't be listening to you. They treat these poor people like crap out here. Treat them like, man, they treat, they, they pick, they pick on poor people. Mm -hmm. They look for poor people to pick on. Right? They mess with their own folks. Keep going, watch this. At his day, you shall give him his hire. Mm -hmm. Neither shall the sun go down upon it. For he is poor and sets his heart upon it, lest mm -hmm. he cry against thee unto the Lord and it be sent unto thee. That's right. I mean, I was uh, I was, uh, talking to a poor dude a long time ago, like I gave him some money. He was like, he was like, you know what? He was like, uh, he was like, uh, he was a white dude. He was like, you know what I'm saying? The people that like help out the most, get the most, black people. He was like, he was like, you know what I'm saying? White folks. He was like, my own people. He was like, he was like, they be, they be treat me bad. I was like, yeah, that's crazy. They ain't got no law. The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. All right? Some people think that's a contradiction. All right? Because we read in another place in our law what? What if uh, we read? Third, what we read that, that looked like it might go against this? Third and fourth generation. Visiting uh, God will visit his wrath upon the third and fourth generation. Right? Third. He's a visiting the iniquity mm -hmm. of the children to the third and the fourth generation. He's visiting the Right. right? So that would mean they have to deal with the sins of their fathers. They're not condemned by the sins of their fathers. They just have to deal with the situations that their father's choices put them in. That's right. Right? That's the difference. One says you bear the guilt, right? You bear the guilt of your own sin. That's it. Right? You are only going to be guilty for your own sin. You're never going to be guilty for somebody else's sin. And by being guilty of sin, the punishment is then death. Right? So in other words, you will die only for your own sin. However, a father's sin will create a scenario or create conditions that will impact a children to the third and fourth generation. Mm -hmm. Right? So now me <sighs> sinning may cause me to lose wealth that then will cause my son to not have wealth when he grows. And then therefore his son doesn't have wealth and then his son doesn't have wealth. And it takes three generations to regain a stable life, life, livelihood. Right? Oh, I was like, what in the world was that? But yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, that is eerily quiet here. You know what I'm saying? Got all these kids. You know what I'm saying? It's eerily quiet. So you know what I'm saying? That, that's what happens. Right? That's what it means to visit the iniquity. It just means that the Most High God, in response to sin, is going to lay upon the people consequences, but not guilt. Right? Maybe consequences. Now, he may not make it rain for your generation for three years. He may, he may do a million things. He may kill some folks. Right? Let's be clear. Because I sin, he may kill my child. However, my child is not guilty in his death for my sin. He died, sure. Right? But in his death, his judgment is based off of his own sin. Does that make sense? <clears throat> 
Let's keep going. Yeah, just because you, everybody die and then comes the judgment. You know? That's right. Everybody got to die first. Everybody got to die. Everybody got to I should make y'all say it like the pastor be saying, repeat after me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to die, though. Seriously. Yeah. Keep going. Watch this. Thou shalt not have, oh, my bad. At his day, you shall give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and sets his heart upon it. Mm -hmm. Lest he cry against you unto the Lord, and it be sin unto you. Mm -hmm. The father shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. You shall not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor of the fatherless, nor take a widow's raiment to pledge. Mm -hmm. But you shall remember that you was a bondman in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. When you cut down your harvest in your field and have and has forgot a sheaf in the field, you shall not go again to fetch it. Watch what he said. He said, when you cut down your harvest in the field and you have forgotten a what? A sheaf in the field. Listen, I'm going into my field, got a huge field, and I'm lighting that thing up, boy, I'm hard to going through. I'm pulling up, you know what I'm saying? When you harvest and basically you pulling up the, you know, so let's say it's wheat. You pull up the wheat from the ground and you get a whole bundle of it. You wrap that bundle up, you know what I'm saying? You throw it back and that's one sheaf. You know what I'm saying? Then you get the next one, doing some hard work. It's hard work. You picking it up, bundling it up, and two sheep, three, four, five. You getting through, and you lay it down. You like, okay, I got a nice bundle of bundles. You know what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and take these back, so I can go back and get the rest of the sheep. And then let's say I forgot one out there. Book say what? Because uh, I got so many, I'm bundling up. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back and forth and back and forth. Let's just say one, I accidentally left it out there. Watch, watch what the book says. And as for God a sheaf in the field, you shall not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all the work of thine hands. You left it out there. He said, no, nah, you leave it out there now. Because you know somebody poor is going to come through. Somebody that needed it going to walk through. And now, remember, our law already said if I walk through your field, I could do what? Pick. I could just pick and eat it. I can't put nothing in my pocket now. You know what I'm saying? The book said I can't, I can't, ooh, that won't be good for later. You can't do nothing like that. <clears throat> but if I'm hungry right now, I can just grab it and just eat. You know what I'm saying? I can eat it in real time. Now, imagine you walk by and you see a bunch. It's already sheafed up. It's bundled right there for you. Ain't that a good day for somebody that's poor? Mm -hmm. Law said that's who that's for, right? Our whole thing was to take care of our people, make sure our people was taken care of, right? Keep going. When you beat thine olive tree, you shall not go over the bowls again. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Mm -hmm. And if you shall remember that you were a bondman in the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. therefore I command thee to do this thing. Watch this. If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's right. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by mm -hmm. a certain number. What number? Forty stripes he may give him and not exceed. All right. You can't exceed mm. 40 stripes. Why? Lest if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem vile unto thee. All right. He said, you go past 40, you know what I'm saying, then you're doing too much. Your brother might not look at you the same. All right. So he put a restriction. You know what I'm saying? You're going to punish somebody. You know what I'm saying? They got the judgment. You're going to get somebody punished. That thing got to be, a, it, you know what I'm saying? It can't over. You can punish them up to 40 stripes. In other words, 40, 40 licks. All right? Keep going. Watch this. You shall not muzzle the ox when he treads out the corn. Mm-hmm. If brother You know what that mean? Yeah, you can't cover up his mouth. Why, why wouldn't you be able to cover up his mouth? Get an ox something to work for. He got to be able to eat while he doing it. Yeah. So he, he, he going and he crushing the wheat on the, on, the, on the floor. And so the reason why you have him do that, you want him to walk around and crush it. You know what I'm saying? Cause to to kind of break it up. So he, he crushed it and breaking it up and turning it into powder and turning it into some, some grain that you can actually use. And so as he walks around, it's like, well, let him eat some of it. Let him go ahead and get down there and eat some of it. What type of stuff is that? 
Right? So he's saying that thing is like, you, you're not supposed to do that. You can't just Don't be so make the man just sit and work and work and work <laughs> so you can get as much corn and grain as you want. The whole thing is like, you know what I'm saying, like trusting that you'll have enough, not being stingy. Yeah. That's what it is. Not being stingy. Mm-hmm. Man, we got some stingy folks, man. We didn't, we didn't learn to be stingy people. Keep going. Watch this. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without, uh, without unto a stranger. Now, let's read that one more time. If a brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry outside unto a stranger. Mm-hmm. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. So now, I asked the question before when we talked about a man that goes, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that just got married. And the books say, you know what I'm saying, is it a man that just got married? You know what I'm saying? If so, if he hasn't taken his wife, he need to go. Then another place say, you know what I'm saying, if you've been, if you just got married, you know what I'm saying, within the last year, then you can't go to battle. And we ask the question, does that fully answer the question of why? Right? Well, we just read that. Does that fully answer the question of why? Yeah, you gotta have children. You gotta see, you gotta have somebody to succeed your name. That's right. Take your inheritance. A man go out to war before he's taking his wife. You know what I'm saying? Don't want your he name blotted no, out in Israel. You ain't got no kids. You ain't got no son to carry it on. And guess what? That's it. Mm-hmm. Now your brother gotta come in and try to do it. And he gotta try to, in a, in a way, substitute for you and for your name's sake. But really, that's his, that's his kid. But that kid just serves as a substitute for you to carry on your legacy. Right? Most of our guys said, we could avoid all that. Go ahead and take your wife. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and take a year and enjoy your wife. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And the wife of the dead shall not marry outside unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of a husband's brother unto her. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of Israel. Mm-hmm. And if the man like, if the man like not to take his brother's wife. Right, then, so if the man just looking like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. It's weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm uncomfortable with that, or I, you know, I'm just not gonna do it, right? Let's see. Then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. Mm-hmm. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Mm-hmm. Then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him and if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and lose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face mm-hmm. and shall answer and say, so shall it be done to, unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. Mm-hmm. And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that has his shoe removed, shoe loosed. Mm-hmm. When men strive together. That testify, y'all, with sure too. We're going to talk about it one day. When men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draws near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smites him. Watch this. And puts forth her hand and takes him by the secrets. Uh-huh. Then thou shalt cut off her hand, your eyes shall not pity her. Right? If a woman go and try to grab a man by his stones, you know what I'm talking about? In an in effort, to, even if it's an effort, try, try to protect her husband. Right? Books say, no, you chop her hand off. That's inappropriate. Yeah, that's a low blow up. Yeah, he said, no, you don't do nothing like that. That's inappropriate. Keep going. Watch this. Thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights, a great and a small. Right? So remember, the way we would have to, most most of what we did, our currency and our purchases, is done based off of weight. So I would take some value, and let's say, you know, let's just take something easy like silver, right? So I would take silver, and if you tell me this is worth five pounds of silver, right? Whatever I'm, I'm buying that book for you, that's a good book. You know what I'm saying? Five pounds of silver. Five pounds of silver, okay. Well, that means somebody would have to have a weight, right? A scale. On one side of it, they'll have to put what? Five pounds. Five pounds, but what's five pounds? Like right now, we can go to the store and buy a little weight that say five pounds. Mm -hmm. You think they have that? No, they'd have to have something that weighs five pounds. They would have to have something that they say weighs five pounds. Mm -hmm. So now when they out on the street and it's time to make some, some exchange, I put a rock, I take this this rock and be like, nah, man, it's five pound rock, real talk. This this rock is worth five pounds. I mean, uh, it weighs five pounds. So you put it over there. So now when you put the silver, I'm weighing it out like one piece of silver, two pieces of silver. And then it's starting to raise up a little bit. Like, give me four, four, let me put one more. Ooh, that's too much. Let me take this little piece off. That's about five pounds. That's about five pounds. Look at that five. Y'all think that five is five? Okay, let me put this one back. 
All right, perfect, five pounds. All right, good. That's a good deal. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Well, now, if I, if I got a rock that's really only four pounds, and I'm doing the pan, and you tell me five pounds, I'm like, oh, I, I just so happen to have a five-pound rock right here, but it's really four pounds. I put it down there, and I'm counting them out. Be like, all right, that's five pounds. Five, but really, it's five. It's four. It's only four pounds. But I'm telling everybody it's five. He said, well, that's unjust weight, right? <laughs> we'll put a ten pound rock on there. He just like loading it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You write it on there, five pounds. You know what I'm saying? That thing really only four pounds, and I'm doing the pan. But you, on the other hand, let's say you said I'm getting paid, then you might do something like that. Yeah. Ten pound, five pound. Nah, no, no, no. I'm telling you. How long has it been since you held five pounds? Yeah, it probably just been a while for you, boy. I'm telling you, I put five pounds. It's always been, it's always been five. At five pounds today, tomorrow, and you know, yesterday. What you talking about, boy? Mm. Right? And they paid me out. I just got 10 pounds because there was, it's not like, it ain't like today, like you just go get a scale and then the scale, everybody got the same scale system. No, man, it's an unjust weight. So he said you couldn't do that. Why? But you shall have a perfect and just weight. Mm -hmm. A perfect and just measure shall you have, mm -hmm. that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God gives thee. That's right. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously is are a an abomination unto the Lord thy God. He said, is it an abomination to you? Abomination to the Lord. <clears throat> Remember what Amalek did unto you by the way when you were come forth out of Egypt. What did Amalek do to us when we came forth out of Egypt? How he met you by the way and smote the hinder most of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee when you was faint and weary. And he feared not God. Right? We put the feeble behind us, the weak people. You know what I'm saying? We put them behind us. Where did we get that from? Uh, Jacob. Jacob. What did Jacob do? Put his wife and kids in the back. When? When he was going, to, when he knew he was on a collision course to meet Esau. Right? So when he thought Esau was about to get that butt, he got nervous. So what he did, he said, okay, all the people that are weak and feeble or special to me go all the way to the back. Right? And so that's how we kind of, that's how we operated. We put the feebler people in the back. And then um, the Malachi came from behind, you know what I'm saying? And then they smote us from the back first. So remember, we went to battle with them. Who remembers what battle that was? What happened in that battle? Is that the one when uh, we took over, uh, what was that? No, that wasn't Og uh, and Sion. No, oh, that's when we was like this. Yeah, when Moses had his hands up. Yeah, yeah, remember? Who had to hold his hands up? Moses. Oh, uh, Moses. The, the, his boy, uh, Aaron, and the yeah, man from uh, Judah. Er, I think it was. No, I think it was, was uh, it I think it was Yahushua and uh, the man Joshua from Judah. Joshua and Er? Yeah, I think Er. Joshua. It might have been Er, yeah. It was some, yeah the other dude was from Judah, though. All right? So you look at it, they got to hold his hands up. And as long as his hands was up, guess what? He was winning. All right, that testified Yahushua, too. All right, keep going. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God has given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek under heaven. You shall not forget it. He said, you shall not forget it. All right? He told us, do not forget it. Keep going. Watch this. And it shall be when you are come into the land which the Lord your God gives thee for an inheritance and possesses it, and dwell therein, thou, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which you shall bring of thy land that the Lord thy God gives thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose, and place his name there. Mm -hmm. And you shall go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, uh -huh. that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear to our fathers to, for, to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And you shall speak and say before the Lord thy God, Assyrian ready to perish was my father. Mm -hmm. He went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few mm -hmm. and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Mm -hmm. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto Yahuwah our God and of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he brought us into this place and has given us this land, even a land that flows with milk and honey. Right? So that's what we had to say when we first get into the land. He said, as soon as you get into the land, you go take some of the fruit. You know what I'm saying? You go take some of the stuff that come out of the ground. 
And once you take it out of the ground, he tell you, bring it to me and you say that, right? Just to kind of sit back and reflect, like, yeah, we made it, but this is where we came from. Most I got to remind him, like, man, yo, yo pop was just like a seer. He lived in a land with the Syrians. And he came down over into, you know what I'm saying, to this land. Then he sojourned down to Egypt. And y'all became a nation there under hard labor. But nevertheless, you made it here, right, by the hand of the Most High God. He just wanted us to kind of remember, like, don't start forgetting stuff, right? Keep going. And I behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, has given me. And you shall set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. And you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God has given unto thee and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Mm -hmm. When you have made an end of tithing, tithing all the tithes of thine increase, the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, mm -hmm. that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Mm -hmm. Then shall you Who say... Who the tithe go to? The stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. In the, there you in go. The, in the Levite. Then thou right, shalt so say... Right, so hold on. So, you, <clears throat> so you, you dealing with a tithe, and all these churches ask for tithes. Who's it typically go to? The church. You usually go to the pastor of the church. Pastor and the church. Right? But that's not proper order. Right? That's just not the proper order. Like, if a, if a man, even if a man was deciding to take tithes, the appropriate thing to do is give it to the fatherless and the widows and the poor. Right? And he not take none of it. If, I mean, if you just said, okay, look, I'm going to take a tithe. Right? You just trying to say, I'm going to take the order of a tithe. Right? The appropriate thing to do is you go give it to the poor. Right? But oftentimes, you're not going to see people do that. Matter of fact, you got to... Um, they got a clip going around of uh, Creflo Dollar. And uh, Creflo Dollar actually admitted, he said, man, we've been doing this wrong for years. He was like, I admit it. Been doing it wrong for years. Been collecting a tie. He was like, and actually the tie is not appropriate for me to collect. He said, the tie, you know what I'm saying? He said, the tie is in the law. He was like, and that's done away with. I was like, I don't they <laughs> got it wrong again. Like, yeah, right. like, I was with you for a second. Okay, okay, okay. It was like, yeah, you know I'm saying, like, okay, all right, keep going. It's like, oh, he got it wrong again. Yeah. Then the Christian bus said, you know what I'm saying? But he said, he said, they go to the Levitical priesthood. You know what I'm saying? Then he said, the Christian bus said, now, I don't regret it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that one, I was like, done. Click. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> done. He is like, because to get there, I mean, to get, you know what I'm saying? I had to go through that to get to where I am right now. Yeah, I'm like, man. man, devil just got us, just, just our minds warped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what type of warped mind you, you think the, it you is? You, 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 you know, got to right? sin to so, get somewhere. Yeah, that's crazy. That's just that mindset. It just, you don't regret sinning because you felt like you had to go through that to get to where you are right now. So in other words, you think you have to sin to get somewhere. Paul said it best. You know what I'm saying? He was like, uh... Why did I do evil that good may come? Which we, which they say, they slander us by saying exactly. that's not man, what we, we gotta, say. We got to get it. Yeah, man. We got to get it. Grab uh, Galatians. Uh, what is that in Galatians? Uh, that is, it, that's right Romans here. chapter 6. Yeah, it's Romans. It's, it's Romans. Romans chapter 6. We got to get it. That's, that's that one. Hit it on the head, that one. You gotta get that's exactly the mindset of these people. The very thing that the most high God sent his apostles to speak against is the very thing that the people who are known, right, that the world knows for following this book. If you talk about the Bible, they're gonna assume you're a Christian. Yeah. Right? If you say, Oh, yeah, no, I read the Bible all the time, they will assume that you are a Christian. Yeah, that's messed up. I was just talking to uh matter yeah. of fact, the lady I was telling you about, uh, the security guard in my neighborhood. You know, so I was talking to her about that because she was, uh, she was, uh, she was gay or whatever. She was getting married to a woman or whatever. And when we told her like we make food, she was like, "You eat seafood?" I was like, "No, I don't eat unclean food." And she was like, "What do you mean?" And then I told her I was like, "Well, God said these foods are unclean, so I don't eat it." And then she was like, "Oh, you a Bible man?" And then she was like, "Well, I grew up in the church too. You know, what I'm saying my family been trying to convert me for the longest. You know, what I'm saying tripping about my lifestyle." Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So she started asking me some questions, but typically, yeah, she assumed I was gonna be bashing her because she gay. I was like, she's like, what do you think about it? And I was like, well, you know what I'm saying? The person that's with a woman that's not married to her, y'all say the same thing as I'll say to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, like, point blank period. Like a thief, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that's, you know what I'm saying, sinning. Like, y'all go all going to one place. So yeah. it is what it is, you know? So. Ask me what I think when you repent. Yeah. So, yeah, I let her know. I was like, uh, 
But I was like, so she was like, some things in the Bible don't make sense. I was like, well, you holler at me and we can try to make these, straighten these things out if you want. Um, but uh, but I was like, uh, it's really just for you to have the information to make your own choice. Like, I'm not trying to convert nothing. I ain't got no time good. for that. I'm good. <laughs> hey, my job, my job is to tell you about it. Yeah. So. You know what I'm saying? Most our God is going to do the drawing and the pulling. Mm -hmm. All right? But we look at it. This is Romans chapter 6. Give me verse 1. What does the book say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Mm -hmm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of Hold us... Hold on. Let's get a little bit further back. Give me uh, Romans chapter 5. What's the last What's the last couple verses there? No, Where I need to start? What was the last verse, but just see. What do I, what do I want to start with to get that thought? Mm. 19? Hold on. 18, maybe? Don't take me too far back. Even with 17, we'll say. Do, yeah, 17 or 18 is good. 18, let's do 18. Right. This is Romans right. chapter 5, verse 18. Watch what the book say. Therefore, as by, one, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Mm -hmm. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's right. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Mm -hmm. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Mm -hmm. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Right. So wherever sin is... He's saying grace abounds much more. In other words, wherever sin is, the Most High God affords a lot more grace around that sin. Right? Grace, is sin good? No. No, sin bad. Grace good? Yes. Grace is good. Right? So he's saying this bad thing causes a good thing around it. Right? This bad thing is causing God to produce a good thing. Right? That's the concept is what, 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 what he's looking at, right? That's what he just said. Now watch him clarify. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might, gray, might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahushua our Lord. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then? He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right? Should I, since clearly sin produces grace and grace is good, maybe I should keep sinning so that there be a lot more grace. Watch them. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Uh-huh. God forbid. He said, <clears throat> God forbid it. Right? Watch this. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Mm-hmm. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto Yahushua were baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, mm -hmm. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for that he is dead is freed from sin. Mm -hmm. for, that, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with the Messiah, we believe that we also live with him. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Messiah being raised from the dead dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Mm -hmm. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Mm -hmm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be de dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Yahushua, the Messiah, our Lord. Why? Let not sin reign, therefore, in your mortal body, mm -hmm. that you should obey it in its lust thereof. Mm -hmm. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Watch this. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. Because what? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for uh -huh. you are not under the law, but under grace. Uh-huh. So that means if sin has the dominion on you, what are you under? Sin. Okay, read it again. Watch the, this. You under the law. You under the law. Yeah. If you if you are ruled by sin, then you will be judged by the law. Right? If you are not ruled by sin, then you are under grace. You have to understand how this thing works, right? <sighs> Everybody has to die. Nobody gets by. Right? So everybody is under the law. Right? 
Grace is what's going to cause you to have an opportunity to repent and turn from sin. When you're under grace, you're still a, you're still a sinner. You're still a sinner. No way around it. You sinned. You still got to die. The grace is the piece of the mercy, the, the private bill of divorcement that's going to be, you know, it's all right. Go ahead and raise back up. You can get you a new husband. Right? Don't worry. You can get you a new husband. But if you under the law, that's it. When you die, you die in another death. Right? So that's why he's saying, yeah, grace abounds, right? Because you have an opportunity. You sin. You have an opportunity to repent from that sin. However, if you're not dead to the sin, right, then now you're under the law. That's not grace. Keep going. Watch this. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under the grace? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Like, Paul answering all the Christians' questions. You know what I'm saying? Just right here. Line <laughs> them right. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself service to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether, unto, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So now when they tell you they can't stop sinning, what are they telling you? They slaves to sin. Read it again for me. He said, to whom you what? Yield yourself servants to obey. His servant you are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. If you can't stop sinning, what you're saying is, I am a servant to sin. Unto what? Yeah. That got that. There's no other way around it. Don't let nobody lie to you. These people have no idea what they're talking about when they open up this book. And don't let them just... Nobody without sin. And nobody can stop sinning. I've never seen a person stop sinning. You're, most High God is not asking you to believe what you've ever seen in your life. He's never asked for that. That's never been a criteria. He never said, yo, whatever you've seen, believe that. You've never heard him say that. He told you to believe the book. That's it. That's your only thing. Believe what the book say. I don't care if you've never seen me stop sinning. T stop sinning. Anybody in this room stop sinning. The book say what it say. Let everybody else lie. Everybody else can lie. You can be the one lone person in the world today that believes it. Stick with the book. Nobody else is going to save you. Nobody else is going to save you. It don't matter what you see people doing. It don't matter who let you down. It don't matter who you, who you believed in and who failed. It doesn't matter. The Most High God will not fail you. Believe the book, not people. <clears throat> we all just being used by God. That's it. Most High God to prop somebody up, teach you something good, show you something good, give you something good. It's rich people that's rich, filthy rich, and evil people. And he's going to give us they wealth. He propped them up just to transfer it to us. You can't be looking at temporary stuff and trying to place your, your faith goes into something that lives forever. The most I got. That's it. Keep going. Watch this. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Mm -hmm. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. That's right. For as on, you have ahead. yielded your members, servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. All right. For, let's, let's go on back. Where we leave off? It's Deuteronomy chapter what? 25? 26. 26. Oh, we made it to 26. I told you all we we're going to cover a little ground. We got to stop when we get to 27, though. You know what I'm saying? When we get to 27, we're talking about some good stuff now. You know what I'm saying? Then we're going to have to get to 28. And it shall be when you are coming One to the land. One time for our Hebrew brother. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> One time for, my, for what they call for the Hebrew for the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One time for the Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Next week, we might have to come back in here wear some darn kilts. What they what them boys be wearing? You know what I'm saying? Wear some darn kilts with a darn armored, armored vest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Them boys be looking crazy. I don't know what's wrong with these people. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why they don't feel like y'all should be wearing, you know what I'm saying? Y'all should have some Nikes on today. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? I feel like y'all should have some Nike. He'd be sporting some Bro, Jordans, baby. I went to the homegirl house. Dude, this is way before we even thought about him. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Tori had on the forces. I was like, what's with this man? Yeah, I feel terrible because yeah. the homie was right. Might be on or something. You know <laughs> he what I'm saying? Was right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We might have entertained it at that time. You know what I'm saying? Life would have been different. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, my man you know was saying? right. I'm sitting there like, Who dang, knows? the yeah. homie was right. We was like, I was like 20? Yeah. 19, maybe? I was like, dang. Yeah, but but I'm walking around here in no darn white skirt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? That's all right, though. You know what I'm saying? Most high God have mercy. And it shall be when you are coming to the land which the Lord God gives thee for an inheritance to possess it mm -hmm. and dwell therein, that you shall take of the first of all the fruit of the earth which you shall bring to thy land that the Lord God gives thee, mm -hmm. and shall put it in a basket and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. Mm -hmm. And you shall go unto the priest that shall be in those days and say unto him, mm -hmm. I profess this day unto the Lord thy God that I am coming to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. My bad. We read all of this. We own verse 10. We own verse 10. And now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which the Lord God has given me, and thou shalt set it before the Lord God and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God has given unto thee and unto thine house, you and the Levite and the stranger that is among you, mm -hmm. when you have made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase in the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt say before the Lord God, I have brought away the hollow things out of my house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, and to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught therefore thereof of any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened unto the voice of Yahuwah my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, in the land which thou hast given us, as thou swear unto our fathers, a land that flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. This day... The Lord thy God has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thy heart, with all thy soul. That's right. Thou shalt, thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee and that you should keep all his commandments and to take keep thee some high, of them? all his commandments. And to take thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and name and in honor, and that thou may be a holy people unto Yahuwah thy God as he has spoken. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. I got that, right? So that's what we look at. We're looking at the law. We're starting to wrap up now, right? We're starting to come to the end of Deuteronomy, closer to the end of Deuteronomy. So next week, we're going to talk about the curses, right? 27 goes into, you know what I'm saying, some of the blessings. Then it's going to go into some of the curses, Right, then 28 gonna do the same thing, gonna go into some of the blessings, then it's gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about the curses in great detail. So, we're gonna spend a lot of time kind of looking at the curses and seeing that uh, chapter 28 is uh, primarily one of, the, one, of the, one of the best chapters to kind of prove out, you know what I'm saying, who we are as a people and, and prove out our link to the ancient Israelites, right, that we descend from the ancient Israelites without having to run a DNA test or anything like that. We just look at because we believe the book, right? We look at the signs and the curses, knowing that we were an unbelieving and a, and a rebellious people. We look at the curses that were, were supposed to occur to an unbelieving and rebellious nation that the Most High God called out. So we'll spend some time looking at that, um, and then uh, we'll, we'll see we'll see if we if we get a little further than 28 going into 29. What's the last chapter? In, uh, is it 32? 32, I think. 32. So you know, and then uh, so 34. 34. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so we'll probably, we'll probably, you know, what I'm saying, get another, get another week or two out of out of Deuteronomy, and then Joshua, and we'll move on to Joshua, right? Yeah, Joshua, that guy. And yeah, now, now after that, we kind of start transitioning into the law. I mean, I'm sorry, out history. of the law and into the history, right? Although Joshua, he <laughs> also writes a lot of a lot of his inside of the law. He actually adds to the law, right? Because he is given that authority to mm -hmm. do so. All right, so we'll get into that a little bit later. But